All right, this is uh, John Brass from RunMichigan.com. I'm talking to Kevin and Keith Hansen from the uh, Brooks uh, Hansen Racing Team. And uh, I know we're down here at the uh, 2020 Olympic Trials for the Marathon in Atlanta. Um, and you guys just got done uh, doing a little uh, talk show out there. Yeah. So, um, I guess, what are you most excited about this weekend? Oh, wow. Singly? Um... I, I think just the, the event itself and seeing how it's grown, you know, some people pointed that out when we were talking out there, um, but uh, just how the trials has, n n number of athletes, but just in general, how, how the importance of the trials has grown. It's just, it's really kind of cool to see. When we were on, Nancy, uh, my wife, said when she was on the plane uh, yesterday that pretty much half the plane was he was flying here for this, which is like a Boston or a New York or things like that. Um, that wasn't the case 20 years ago when we first started. So that's kind of exciting. It's fun. It's the talk of the town. It's the big event going on this weekend. And we're in a major city. Atlanta has got a lot of things going on, but it, this is the event that everybody in town is talking about. And we got 10 athletes here that we're real excited to cheer on. And But like I said, there's a huge number of people out here. It's an exciting course with Criterium Loop, people can get out there and cheer, and I think it'll be just, just a real, real exciting race morning, race day event for everybody here. Yeah, I was gonna say, and I, and I know you mentioned, uh, you know, this is the 20th, 20 years since you guys, uh, I guess, first ran athletes uh, officially, right? In the, the trials, yeah. So, uh, I mean, what what's the biggest change you saw from that, you know, race in 2000 to what we're gonna see tomorrow morning? Uh, that race was, Honestly, I think the biggest thing is that rate, well, first of all, it was only one gender back then. They would run men and women at different sites back then. But the, um, the men's uh, race was, was uh, broke open. It just appeared to be um, 80, to 100, 80 to 100 guys um, just running alone. And nobody seemed to be, it didn't seem to be a race. It just didn't seem to be, it just didn't carry on the excitement that uh, the trials um, have f over the last three three trials. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I know, you know, four years ago out in LA, it was much hotter out there. Yeah. And so I know tomorrow it's supposed to be more, I guess, I guess it's better the, weather for a marathon. Well, back, where you, back in 2000, we were talking about that was a hot day in Pittsburgh on a hilly it? course. Um, but the, but yes, uh, last year was, was, was hot in Los Angeles and tomorrow is going to be probably in the upper 40s and a little bit windy um, and hilly. So it won't be fast, but it will, the weather will not be a disadvantage, I mean, temperature wise and, and there's no precipitation. So it'll be, it'll be a nice day for that respect. I think the course, course is deceiving. Um, I think it's, um, people think that it's rolly, but um, when it's a criterium course that you do all of those, multiply that times three because yeah. every it's not like, oh, it's, it's steady up, going up Peachtree. Yeah, well, you're going to go up that three times. So well, that's the funny thing. People always talk about this, you know, a race and a marathon, the big hill at 22 or 23. And what's funny is that that hill that they hit at 22 or 23 this time, they hit, hit already, but it's only big at 23. And that's how it sort of happens. There's, there's this sort of feeling that a hill, hill is way. I mean, at Chicago, you go up the little bridge at the end and Pete and that that, be, that feels like a mountain to people at, at the point that you hit it you know so hitting these upgrades and the third lap around is going to really feel hilly I was going to say I know I just went out for a run this morning and it felt pretty bad <laughs> yeah exactly right yeah and that's all right and I, and I only had to run four miles so <laughs> so I, I feel for them tomorrow yeah, I know exactly. it's gonna it's gonna be when, definitely yeah, gonna be. when they're hitting those hills uh, like you said the third time it's third not, time around I think we're going to see a different yeah. runner I, I don't think uh, the, I don't think you want to be aggressive early here. Yeah. Do you, I mean, do you expect this to be a little more like, um, kind of like when you go to the NCA cross countries and you just see everybody kind of packed in together, kind of waiting to see what happens? And... I don't because okay. I believe that the world-class army program guys the wanted, to go, wanted to go out hard. Oh, and really? So I think okay. that they're going to, I think they're going to be aggressors. And truthfully, if we look at um, kind of what they've done over the last four years, um, they've proven that that's been a good strategy for themselves on the track. They've been very aggressive, more so than um, 
than in the past. And so I think they've kind of changed things a little bit that way. So it should make it interesting to see who goes out and who's... Who's going to respond to it. Who's good, But I think that the Army guys are going to... We're kind of hoping it happens that way because it'll, it'll, it'll make it a, a different sort of race in the men's side at least. So. Okay. To yeah, me, guess... the drama only comes in place if there's carnage at the end. So right. I, you know, I mean, I got, I, I'm hoping that if it goes out hard enough that uh, yeah. we see some stragglers at the end. Yeah. Which, I mean, does usually seem to happen. I mean, these yeah. races, I think yeah. that's one thing I noticed from going to the trials that yeah things you just all of a sudden can, before you know it it just it just it could be much more profound if they're out hard I mean yeah. it could be something where somebody seems completely controlling everything in hand at 21 22 miles yeah. and still not not be you know when, when it's out really fast all right I will bet that well over half the field does not run the qualifying standard to be here yeah, yeah you know so just uh, so um, we'll see so with, I know with your athletes, and you were talking a little bit earlier, um, can you maybe mention, like you said, who you're kind of um, looking that's, that'll be out there yeah. trying to be contending in this race? Um, on the guys' side, we have, um, we have Shadrach Baiwat, who has been top five in three different um, uh, world marathon majors. Um, we have Dathan, who has, is a three-time Olympian, and um, Brendan Gregg, who is just learning the marathon, but has run 211.38 and has um, gotten two minutes better every, uh, and he's run 28.03 for 10K. So he's got, um, he, uh, he he can handle race surges and so on and so forth. So we'll those, see how it goes. Those three athletes are all those, prepared to contend and that, that'll be exciting to see them out there. And like Kevin mentioned, you know, with Brendan, I mean, both, both Shadrach and Brendan, their, their, their projectile has been where they're, they're gotten better each time out in Shadrach with his place finishes in world marathon majors the last three world marathon majors with New York and and Boston um, as well as uh, with with Brendan his last two marathons he's finally gotten it down he struggled for a couple marathons in his early marathon career but he has two in a row where he's been been good and then better is uh, we smart think he guy better here. Learner. yes yeah. how about on the women's side uh, women's side, we ha we're, we're in a little different situation because I, I think partially because the women are so good right now. The women, you gotta remember, I mean, honestly, <laughs> well, the women have raised the bar s from the last Olympics where we had three women in the top 10. Um, and there's a whole group that has just been pushing to be there. So I think truthfully, we have, um, we have women that I think could be in the top 20. Um, and I think we have three women that can be in the top 20. I think that could sneak into the top 20 again. Um, and uh, it, she's been there a few times already. I think that uh, Dana can finish in the top 20. And I think Michelle can finish in the top 20. So um, that's kind of our goal on the women's side. I was gonna say, you guys have been pretty consistent about that. I think it seems like over the years, you've always had women you know, finishing you know, right. you know, with, that Desi qualify, and then you've had other ones like you said right. up there. You yeah, know, yep. so. and well, the other thing that's kind of fun here is Melissa is running as well, and Melissa um, uh, qualified um, after I think I think it was four months after having a baby, her second baby. Oh, so wow. it's like so it's like so yeah. So and she's our she, first female athlete in our program. So yeah, it's exciting yeah, so to you know she's, she's a, a great tradition program, so in having her here. We're really excited yeah. about. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, and then, uh, I mean, time-wise, what what kind of times do you guys think on the on the uh, men's side, the women's side that we'll be I, seeing I think, tomorrow? I think things are going to run about I think about two to three minutes slow from what these people are I was capable of. Two twelve to two thirteen, and you know, two twelve ish in the men's okay. winning time. Cable, that's what I was thinking. I don't. Kevin, I haven't talked in depth about that, other than the fact that of course it'd be hard and, and slower. But I, I if throwing a number out. That's what I would project although it changes based on the strategy you know what I mean right. if people are out you know if they get out real conservative then obviously it might not ever but if they're out real fast I still see people fading from that so it'll be you know that's yeah. my thought and and I assume you've had your athletes down here to, to run part of the course we did they had a race here a year ago okay um, where they did just one loop okay um, um, and it was uh, interesting and I think it was very telling um, a lot of people, a lot of times, will come down and do course tours and things like that. But I think this was even more valuable to run on it at race, at marathon pace, right. and say, "Whoa!" Just, and just kind of see. <laughs> yeah, just a second. That 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 beat me up pretty good. And that was one lap. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs>
What and you mentioned uh, the wind. I know you know this morning. I know it was a little bit windy out there. Not not too bad, but uh, it's going to be windier tomorrow. Okay, it's going to be yeah. ten degrees warmer tomorrow and windier. T okay. This morning it was like thirty five degrees and about ten mile an hour winds. Tomorrow it's supposed to be. Uh, 45 degrees and 15 to 18 mile an hour winds. So it'll be so. interesting, like I said, again, with tactics, how people play that. You right, know, right. Let other people take right. the win for them. And we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. You know, the one thing is, I will say this, I don't know what the World Class Army programs, they have a few guys that have qualified through half marathons that they may have no intention of doing anything other than making it fast for Lenny's right. career, you know, so because Lenny is definitely, he's one of the favorites. Um, ran 207 in Amsterdam and so he did it going out hard so. and he did it going out hard so I think yeah I think they're gonna I, I would guess that they want to go out fairly hard comfortable so. that he can hold on to hold He's on got to some even teammates to deal with and so on and so forth so we'll see so you guys uh, excited to see all the, the, the spectators that are coming oh, down yeah. to watch oh, it's, uh, we always are that's the greatest part are, about yeah. it heck yes so. we like it because they see um, our athletes um, as as heroes, and and we, it's it's special for us because um, they don't the athletes don't see themselves that way, and so this is kind of a good thing. If you're in town or coming in town, come to the Brooks Hyperion House to watch it. It's a yeah. great spot, great right on the course, and plenty of, plenty of spots to watch. It'd be a big crowd here. All right, Kevin and Keith. Well, thank you guys very much. I always appreciate you guys taking the time to talk to Run Michigan. So Heck yes, thanks, John. Thank you for what you do. All right, thank you.